Most people spend hours or even days deciding which helium hotspot is right for them. Is it the rack hotspot, knowing it's been around the longest? Or is it the Bobcat, being it's the newest? Or is it the Nebra, with its outdoor capabilities? I can't blame anyone for doing this, as I did the same thing for days before ordering my first miner. The truth of the matter is, they are all very similar. Sure, there are some slight technical differences, but after doing some research, these differences seem to be minimal and won't make or break your HNT mining success. That being said, I even have a few friends who have the original helium hotspot miner that is not even sold anymore, and they have been having major success. So that being the case, which is the most reliable? Which company has the best track record for onboarding these devices and earning HNT for their customers? Let's take a look. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Crypto Compound channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Helium and HNT news analysis and updates. Before we jump into this video, the minor giveaway is in the works. We should be confirming the winner shortly here on the channel. Very excited about that. Thank you all for participating. Really, really exciting stuff. So for this video, we are going to be looking at which miner might be best for you? First, let's look here. We're approaching 33,000 hotspots already. We are at about $18.50 with regards to the h and price. Both really great numbers, really, really exciting stuff. There's a lot of growth happening. So let's dive in to the miners. So we are here on the hotspot page of the Explorer for Helium. We go down, we can see the map here, the interactive map, we can see the top cities, stuff like that. And here we are at the makers. Now we can see here, there's the Helium Inc, which I believe is the original Helium hotspot that they uh, that they were originally sending out, that Helium made. I don't believe these, these aren't sold any longer, um, but they do still work. I have friends, like I mentioned in the intro, I do still have friends who use them and they're, they've been incredibly successful. And of course we have the cal chip here we have the nebra here synchro bit which is very new five uh, hotspots added we have the bobcat here as well and these are some others i'm not exactly sure what these are i would just ignore them for the purpose of this video but what we want to look at is like i said a lot of these miners have very few technical differences of course they're they're they the miner makers try to differentiate their product from the others but at the end of the day, they are all connecting to the same network and they all have the same purpose, which is to mine HNT. Keep in mind, you can connect third party or external antennas to all of these devices. So the antenna it comes with is not incredibly important because it can be changed. And they all, even though I believe the Bobcat comes with a slightly higher DBI antenna, from what I understand, it is not going to make an, uh, one DBI difference from three to four is not going to make a tremendous difference in the signal strength or the uh, or the reach of that antenna. So if we take all that into consideration and, and basically consider all of these as being very, very similar with regards to the hardware and stuff like that, and we understand that they're all gonna ultimately connect to the same network and mine HNT, how can, using these numbers that they, they have provided here, how can we de decide which of these might be the best miner to buy? Now, I'm not going to really talk about the Nebra in this video because I don't think that these numbers are accurate for Nebra. They don't seem, it says seven hotspots added, 18,000 HNT burned. I don't believe that that's accurate, so we're not going to consider Nebra here. What we're going to do is... We're, I'm not familiar with the synchro bit. I haven't spoken to anyone who has one or anything like that. We're gonna compare the Cal chip here with the Bobcat. So right off the bat, we can see that there are the hotspots added. So there's 1,700 hotspots added for the Bobcat compared to 13,110 hotspots added for the for the Cal chip or the Rack Miner. Now, of course, the the Rack the Cal chip Rack Miner was one of the first third-party manufacturers to be approved to sell this miner. So they do, of course, have a lot more miners set up and working and connected so that makes sense but we can compare the amount the the hotspots added with the amount that are burned with each of these so judging by the amount of hotspots we can try and tell if one of them is burning more HNT than the other 
uh, per hotspot that's added. Now, of course, there are a lot of differences based on where the locate the location of these miners how people are setting them up, if they're in good locations or not, all of those come into consideration. But using these very broad, high level, big numbers, let's see which mining company has more HNT burned per hotspot deployed. So if we take 199.50 HNT burned and we divide that by 13,110 hotspots. So based on these numbers, that tells us that the rack or Calchip miner has burned approximately 15 HNT per hotspot that is added on their network. Now, if we compare that to the Bobcat, we can do 20,128 divided by 1720 hotspots. And we can see that for the Bobcat and the amount of hotspots they have and the amount of HNT they burned, they burned close to 12 HNT per hotspot that has currently been added. So it does seem like the Caltrip is burning more HNT, which is good. We like to see that. That is, that is good for the Caltrip and the Rack Miner, and it proves that it is working. The, they are working and they're, they're effective. And using these early numbers, comparing them to the Bobcat, they seem to be more efficient or more effective than the Bobcat. Now, the other very interesting, the other very interesting number here is this adds and asserts a left. So if we look here, it'll tell us that this means that this is the number of hotspots this maker could afford to onboard given their current data credit balance assuming the cost, blah, 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 blah. So it's basically the number of hotspots this maker could afford to onboard given their current data credit balance. Now we can see that the Calchip or Rack Miner number is far, far greater than the Bobcat. This is interesting because if we think about the amount of back orders that these companies have, if they're, they're, they're being held back by a number of things, mostly chip shortages is, is the big one and co other COVID-related slowdowns in the supply chains, but it's mostly the the chip shortage that is affecting all of these miners, mining companies, and their supply chain. But if that was to go away tomorrow, this these numbers tell us that Calchip could basically make and ship out 25,000 miners because that is what they have the ability to do right now. If all of the other circumstances and draw and slowdowns go away, they could ship 25,172 miners tomorrow. However, the Bobcat, this is the same, this is the same number here, with compared to this number, they could only ship out or they only have balance for onboarding 2,813 new miners or hotspots. So from, from my perspective, this makes me more comfortable knowing, this would make me more comfortable buying the Calchip rack miner than the Bobcat right now. And like I have mentioned in previous videos, I do have a Calchip rack miner in uh, on order i ordered it about in february before this channel was even around but that is the one i've purchased and that i'm waiting on and of course there are delays but th those delays are not unique to any one of these miners they all are having these types of issues uh, it is just a it is just the reality we're living through today but knowing that calchip connected devices is able to to afford 25,000 172 new hotspots is very promising. That is great news for Calchip. And it is a little worrisome because I'm sure Bobcat probably has close to, I don't know, maybe 20,000 pre-orders that they, that have already been ordered and they, they just haven't been fulfilled yet. But unless they go out and purchase millions of more data credits, they're not gonna be able to fulfill and onboard those hotspots. So that is a little worrying. Uh, it is a very interesting statistic though that I noticed the other day, but let me know what you guys think. Am I reading any of this incorrectly? Let me know if you guys think, if you have a preference over one or the other or have heard or, or have heard otherwise from people you know with these different miners. Let me know what you guys think. I hope uh, I hope this video was helpful and, and hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to make a decision. At the end of the day, what really matters is getting one of these, these miners to you sooner than later. I'll make a video regarding the timeline of these different companies and when we can and expect them. Of course, nothing is in stone, but a, a little bit of a, a better idea of when we could expect to, or, to get delivery of some of these miners. That might help make this decision a little bit easier as well. But of course, let me know your comments below what you guys think. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for being here, everybody. Please like and subscribe if this was helpful. It'll help spread the word. Until next time, I will see you next video.